Today's video is going to be about two of my favorite things, fatwood and big knives. This time it's going to be the Schrade SCHF 28, which is brand new for 2015. My name is Brian and you're watching Survival On Purpose. Okay, welcome back to Survival On Purpose. Thanks for joining me today. Like I said, this video is going to cover a couple of topics. First one being one of my favorite things, fat wood. And also we're going to talk about a brand new knife from Schrade. It's going to be a, it's a 2015 edition. So as of the time of this video, this knife's not even available yet. So thanks to Schrade for sending me this so I can show it to you. And since this is a big knife, kind of good for a chopper, I thought this would be a good opportunity to uh, go harvest some more fat wood, talk a little bit about how you find some fat wood, and see how well this knife performs in some actual field use. So before we do that, I want to kind of give you the details as I have them. I don't have you know, a lot of details because this knife's not really out yet. I've got some of the specs, and I want to talk to you about those, talk, and just go over what I do know, and then we'll, we'll get right to doing some knife stuff with this thing. Okay, so this is the 2015 model Schrade SCHF 28. It's a full tang fixed blade knife. Features a titanium coated blade of 8CR13 MOV high carbon stainless steel. And it's a drop point recurve style blade with a finger guard and a choil. Uh, it's got TPE handle slabs with finger grooves and a lanyard hole. And it comes with a multi carry option thermoplastic belt sheath with grommet holes in it. The blade of this knife is about seven to seven and a half inches long, depending on where you measure it from. The overall length is 14 inches or so. And the weight is, I really don't know, it's, but it's a pretty hefty knife. Right now, this knife's not even released yet, so I've got sketchy specs. Don't know what kind of price it's gonna be. Uh, like everything else from straight, it's probably gonna be a bargain. That's the SCHF 28. And I'm just gonna show you the sheath just a little bit better. It's got a belt closed belt loop on the back looks like it'll take about an inch and a half yeah about an inch and a half inch and three quarter belts what it's going to take it's not quite two inches um, opening right here it's got a, a little velcro strap up top it's got a lot of lashing points on it difference for straps or lashing the, the knife fits in pretty well it kind of locks in pretty secure retention i'm actually surprised by that okay i, I thought it would come out because the knife's pretty heavy but Definitely, I would suggest using the Velcro, but it actually did pretty well, so I thought it was gonna fall out, and kind of surprised me, which is good. It's got a lanyard hole right here on the uh, on the finger guard, which for, and another lanyard hole here, so there's some grips that, and some lanyard grips that you could use that, that use this hole, which would come in handy if you're doing some chopping. And this is definitely, I think, a chopper. The handle's got a, a little kind of finger cutouts on it, and a pretty good bit of, if you wanna use a three finger grip like this, really fits pretty good, and you kind of, wrap your pinky on the bottom to get some really good leverage. I think that'll work fine. I believe this is going to be a great chopper just because of the ge geometry of the blade. You know, a lot of people don't like recurves. They definitely have their disadvantages and advantages. But from a chopping standpoint, it puts a lot of mass right behind us, right behind the point. So or right behind the impact point, rather, where you're going to be chopping. And then for close up work, it does have this choil here, which is going to be helpful. We'll find out about the spine and we'll possibly check the balance of this thing. I think it feels pretty good, but what I thought we'd do, instead of just a standard review, is I need some more fat wood. Uh, you can never have enough fat wood. Fat wood's like knives and guitars. You just can't have enough of it. So we're gonna take briefly take the camera off the tripod and kind of walk with it for a minute and, and go mobile just to show you kind of how I look for fat wood. I've got some right here in this stump that you can see the top of. I've already harvested some out of it. It's got a lot more in it. I thought, I'll kind of show you my thinking on how I go about looking for it. I found a little bit more a minute ago, and we'll talk about that for a minute, and we'll talk about this knife, and let's get to it. Okay, first of all, I want to show you this is a stump that already harvested some fat wood off of. You can see this actually sawn on top, and I did that. You can tell it's fat wood. It's got a little bit of a turpentine smell. So you can see this little piece right here especially, that reddish color all, that, all in there. That's the, uh, the rosin, the resin in the, in the wood that actually makes it fat wood. You see just a little bit there on that piece that came out there. So that stuff burns like gasoline. So go ahead and take a walk about here for a minute. Take a look at how you can find your own fat wood maybe. 
Okay, so uh, I found this the same way I always find fatwood. I really look at look for stumps. You know, you can you can look around and find fatwood sometimes where limbs have broken off and whatnot. But to get the mother loads, look for stump. Okay, so here's a stump, and the first thing I always do if I see a, a pine stump, it looks like it's got some stuff sticking up. That could be fatwood because fatwood generally doesn't rot like the rest of it does. The, the resin, the same resin that burns, causes it to not rot. But I just take and kick it, and if it Kicks apart like that and it's, it's not fatwood. Okay, well there's a little cool little turtle. A little box turtle, terrapin, I'm not sure what he is. But. Hello, Mr. Turtle. Okay, well let's leave Mr. Turtle alone. Okay, so here's another pretty good sized stump with some, seems like pretty hard wood sticking up. And really the only way to tell if it's fatwood is just to take a, take a chunk of it and see. We'll go ahead and a little chopping on it. See if you get any color. Sound like I'm sound like I'm mining for gold, doesn't it? See if there's color. That's really what you do with fatwood. Two indications, color and smell. I don't see any color in this. Don't have any smell either, so not fatwood. Okay, so here's a pine tree that's been fallen. It's laying here. And there's a good opportunity for some fatwood here wherever the, uh, the limb was broken off. So what we can do is just take a look at that. And we'll smell of it. You know, people think you're kind of weird you walk around sniffing wood, but... Oh yeah, so we got some fat wood there. I'll, I'll get you in a little closer here in a minute. Let's let you see. The, you know, some of, it's, some of it's more potent than others, but this has got some pretty good resin content, I think. And so if you... Yeah. So you see all those... That amber-looking color right in there. Okay. And it smells, I wish you could smell this, it just smells wonderful. Uh, that's a fatwood smell, so let me get you a close-up over here, and we'll, we'll harvest some of this right here, see how good this knife does. Yeah, okay, so the thing is, if you have a saw, sometimes you can do a lot better because you can actually cut off chunks without wasting all these little, the little shavings and choppings that you wind up chopping off, but, you know, this is not a saw review. It's a knife video, so we'll go ahead and, uh, chop this chunk off with a knife see how well it does okay so you can see we got some in there in addition we've also got some some non-fat wood out there we'll, we'll save that though okay the knife's doing great because that was not really the easiest thing to chop man look at that that is absolutely saturated that's some seriously seriously good fat wood there uh, I mean this you can see the color in the end there. It's just saturated with rot resin, so that's great. But you notice we're chopping with the main part of the blade here, and I'm holding with a three finger grip, kind of down at the bottom, and it's just chopping really great. And this is some really hard, hard wood. That wood is not, not at all soft and easy. See if it break off now. No, see, it's not even gonna. It's halfway through and it's not even close to breaking. Come on, get this knife. A really good workout. There we go. Okay, so I have to give this one. The SCHF 28, pretty good marks for chopping. Chops really, really good. Again, you got a big mass of the blade right here. A three finger grip, so it's really catch, it's just perfect here. Great chopper, uh, <coughs> really good. Okay, just to show you, uh, got a pretty rough baton here. Let's split out a piece of this fat wood and do a little bit of batoning, not much, and just to hurriedly, to because um, we're kind of in a public place and i really don't want to draw a lot of attention banging on stuff and have somebody find my fat wood so uh let's show you this carve off a little piece because this is a pretty good size stump but and the, the thing about batoning something like this is it's not open at the bottom so there's nowhere for this nowhere for it to go you know if you're batoning a stick or whatever once it gets so far it's, the pressure can release from the bottom in this case it can't so Probably not a, not a great idea to baton this, to be honest with you. 
And this thing is eating alive, working alive with some ants or something there. So, but no worse for the wear. Banged it pretty good. That's, the edge is perfect. I'm not really going to push this any further. I've got five stitches in my hand, by the way, which doesn't feel too good. So, see that? Look at that. Wow, beautiful. You know, maybe it's not beautiful to you, but it is a thing of beauty to me. So, what I thought we'd do is we adjust this a little bit more. Go and see about carving a little feather stick here. A fat wood feather stick is one of my favorite ways to start a fire. And it's a little harder to carve because it's, it, it kind of wants to flake off on you. But even if it does, you can still use that, use that little feathers, the little pieces that flake off to build a fire. Because they burn like nobody's business. Anytime you're doing a feather stick, you really want to kind of move around a little bit because you want to keep kind of cutting corners here. You want to keep keep yourself on a little bit of, a, of the corner angle, even though it's a very, very minor corner, still a corner. And you can see the fat was, it's got such a high resin content, it's really hard to feather. But anyway, uh, I have to say this, let focus, focus, focus. Not too bad, not too shabby. That right there will burn like a torch. Not going to do it out here because there's a lot of leaves. Okay, so we're not going to start a fire, but I do want to see if this thing will strike a ferro rod. It's got it close to a 90 degree spine back there. I'm going to take a look and see. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's great. So that's a plus. I'm glad to see Shreds is starting to make more and more of their knives with some pretty sharp spines. So, okay, so we saw how well this thing does some topping stuff. There's only one more test to perform. And I'll just tell you that, I mean, I just want to look at that. Look at that. That is pristine. You could use this thing for a scale. It is so well balanced. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, you, I could stand here and chop fat wood all day long, and I'm running out of room to carry it. So that's been a down and dirty field use test of the F of the Schrade SCHF 28 full tang recurve super chopper knife this thing is really really I'll be honest with you when I first saw this knife a picture of it wasn't really sure I wanted to take a look at it because uh, I'm not a huge fan of recurves for a lot of tasks but then I saw it on wingman 115 channel saw how big it was I thought no I, now you're talking that's that's it looks like a beast of a chopper and I can tell you it is it's just the handle's got enough flare on it. You really get a good grip on it. So, chop's great. What little baton we did, it did fine. I have no doubts this thing will baton just fine. It's a seven inch blade. You can baton, you know, four inch wood with this, no problem. It did surprisingly well in carving. I think that finger choil really helps. And it uh, strikes a ferro rod really, really good on that nice square spine there. So, and, uh, by the way, as you saw, it's very, very well balanced. Anyway, if you're looking for a really good chopper, you can't buy this one now. Sorry, it's, it's the time of this video anyway. It's not released yet. This is a 2015 edition. I don't have pricing or anything else. If it's like everything else Shrade does, I'm sure it'll be an excellent value. But uh, this is going to be, a, I think, a, a real good knife to have if, you're, if you like big knives and choppers and kind of one tool options. So, hope this has been helpful. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. Thanks for subscribing. Please click that thumbs up down below if you like the video. Let Google know you like outdoor knife and those kind of videos. Share, share, share with your friends if you think they'll like it. And finally, uh, if you like to support this channel, please check out the Amazon links below. I really appreciate it. Once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared.